This is uh, what the new magazine looks like. Uh, the theme of the issue is the unsayable, which turns out to be very timely. And also with this issue, we have the uh, MA supplement for graduate photography online for the best of uh, this year's MA graduates selected <coughs> by the picture editor from the New Yorker, The Economist, and Sarah Allen from the Sarah Allen from the, the Tate. So you, this comes with uh, this issue and is also uh, excellent and full of fascinating work. Uh, I should say a little bit about the about this issue. Uh, in a minute, we're going to speak to two contributors. Um, but first, I should tell you a bit about the issue itself. Uh, the theme is the unsayable uh, with a subtitle Beyond Words, and that says something about what the issue is about. Um, it's proved uh, unfortunately timely, like the previous issue of the magazine, uh, in that it seems to sync with uh, contemporary events um, in, a, in a, a strangely almost prophetic turn of events. Um, we have a feature in this issue about um, playing cards that have been specially produced to help people communicate in um, care homes, um, which was commissioned actually before the virus um, uh, hit the country in March and is now published in this issue with the re-arrival of uh, COVID lockdown on the scene around uh, Ireland and the UK. Um, and this is a fascinating piece. Uh, we have a uh, extended retrospective interview with uh, Claire Strand. Um, there's a piece about uh, communication with uh, translators um, that is conducted through a sort of staged photographs. Uh, all of this seems strangely uh, relevant for this particular moment. Uh, the two people we're going to talk to today are uh, Lorraine Tuck, who has a, a portfolio in this issue, and Ed Welsh, who is a, um, a long uh, a contributor of uh, with a long service record for writing for Source, who's written a uh, uh, a review in this issue. We wanted to give a bit of insight into the uh, um, all of the content in the magazine in this issue. Um, but first of all, I should say thanks to uh, our co-hosts, the Gallery of Photography Ireland, who uh, have been helping us out with this. Hello, Trish. Um, have been helping out with this launch as with the previous one. And I should mention our, our uh, funders, um, the Arts Council of Ireland, the uh, Arts Council of Northern Ireland and Belfast City Council. This magazine, it's in my hands, it can be in your hands too. Uh, it's available from our website. You can buy individual copies or you can buy a subscription. It's an excellent value. And it's also available in some outlets for places that still have photography galleries that are open. Um, you can probably get a copy there and if you can help them out by going and seeing their shows and um, buying things from their bookshops. All the better for everybody, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, but without any further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Tuck. Um, she is a, uh, a kind of um, a great example of what we try to do at Source in that we first encountered her um, work a couple of years ago when we reviewed her book. Uh, in the self-published book review section of the magazine. And uh, Lorraine then met my co-editor, John, at a portfolio review last year. And uh, we feel like this sort of relationship has now gone through a cycle in which we're now publishing this portfolio of work. Uh, and again, I think um, the, the, um, this work is perfect for this issue. Uh, so I should introduce Lorraine. Lorraine. Hello. Can you, you can hear me okay there. Perfectly, thank you. Good. So um, I should ask you first of all, because it's always a, a question when we put a, th a theme on a magazine, um, whether or not it is an imposition on the work that, that we're publishing. But the unsayable, I think, works very well with your portfolio. Oh, I, I, I thought it was genius because in a way to describe autism, um, it is in a way beyond words and, and when I saw the the whole uh, issue uh, put together I was really impressed 
um, for all the portfolios, and um, particularly to mine because we uh, at home I use a lot of pecs and um, pictures, which some people might know for children that have autism in order to, to speak to my children and particularly my youngest child, who's um, nearly almost you know he he doesn't have a huge vocabulary, so yeah, there's a lot of things there that really worked um, in, in in regard to my work. So we should go back to the beginning and can you just give us some, we'll look at some pictures in a minute, but can you give us a little summary of what the work is around? So this work is all about autism spectrum disorder. So I have four kids, so everyone knows this. Um, it, 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 it's, it's been written and um, two of my boys have autism. So basically there's, there's Sive, Maeve and Sean and Manus. Manus is the baby and He's a seven-year-old baby. He has an intellectual disability with his autism and a lot of comorbidities and medical needs. So he's a, he's a, he's a tricky guy, but he's a gorgeous little guy. And then there's uh, Sean, who just has autism and no medical needs and no um, real um, uh, issues other than with his schooling and his behaviours. So I have a, a child who has a severe intellectual disability and autism and a child who has high function autism. And then there's the two girls and they are what we regard in our world as NTs, they're neurotypicals. Um, they, 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 they're wonderful sisters and they're wonderful carers to their brothers, particularly the youngest brother, who's the one that dominates the home. And I think in the portfolio, it probably, it's seen where Manus is photographed quite a lot because he's the dominant child, his autism and his personality is, is it, you know, it, it's take, it, it can take over the family home in a way. Um, should, we have a look at, should we have a look at some of the pictures? Mm -hmm. um, I, I can share um, a, the portfolio, and then, uh, or a, a selection of pictures from the portfolio, uh, and that will allow us to, um, to look at uh, the pictures you're talking about. So this, this image is really important. Um, the reason being, so here I am, 40 weeks gestation, and um, I was helping my partner, David, take some animals off. Well, I was actually tagging along at this point, to be quite honest. Uh, I was helping him taking some animals from a low-lying area. I w there was torrential rain and the land was flooded. There was a couple of ponies and donkeys. So I actually had my camera with me on this day, and I decided to use this opportunity to make this self-portrait with the idea of making a project about the family um, but however little did I know of what way the project would uh, really uh, take shape you know and also it begs the question of whether is the autism a genetic thing or was it an obstetric thing and that's something as well that I, I, I can press play on you know in my mind all the time um, and the, you know the for me, it's quite an important picture, even though it was made much earlier uh, to the rest of the work. But it's it's a you know. This you, we should say also that you you this is your working environment. You you work in a farm. Yes, I I'm a mom first, um, a farmer, and a, a, a photographer. Um, you know, the, 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 this is called Cala Land, actually, which many farmers might know it's a place that floods it's a bit of a pain in the backside to um to many uh, farmers but um it's a place also that um, um, we use quite frequently in the summer you know so um this so the, image okay so this thing. image is all about rigidity and fixation and uh so man has an should, obsession should... with doors Sorry, sorry uh, to interrupt you there, Lorraine. So you, we should explain who, who, who this is. This is your youngest son. So this is Manus, the boss. So Manus has an obsession with doors. And this is all about, really, this image is all about that fixation and obsession and fetish with doors. And he, he loves this spot in the stable that we go to. And if he wasn't there for a year, he'd still return to this spot. And he has a lovely way of, he, he, he goes down and he opens the door and he flaps it over, over and back a few times and then he takes a look at me and he does it again. And it wouldn't matter how many times he do it, 
he'd, 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 if you left him there for 24 hours a day, he'd probably do it. So there's always this thing where you have to be cautious and wary of doors. You know, he loves oven doors, kitchen doors, fridge doors. Um, our house is barricaded <laughs> from everything. Um, it's amazing. Um, so I let him have a little bit of door action, but you know, and the horse here is interesting because he's 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 used to looking at this this little boy, um, and 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 uh, like the imagination can go wild with this. Um, and Gavin Murphy uh, wrote about it in a lovely way in the text in the magazine. Um, you know, he's almost suggesting that he's in a NASA suit. He is actually, Andy, uh, that uh, he's about to take off and. I love it. I love the way he speaks about that because this image to me is strangely kind of beautiful to me in a way. Is uh, did you would you have planned a pitch like this or did it just happen because you just you saw it how it was happening? No, I actually I, to be honest, I yeah, you know what? I planned it because I can't plan Manus's behavior, so I can't take him there and imagine he's going to to do exactly what I want to do, but I've taken lots of shots of this site with him, and uh, this one just with his hand gestures in, in that perfect position where he's. This is a big hand gesture for Manus. You know, he, he we we try to teach him a little bit of love, and you know, he's this is hello, but is it hello? You know, he does it all of the time repetitively, so. Um, mm, Let's have a look at some of the other members of the family. Pardon me? Oh, yeah. This is some of the other members of the family. So this is all hands on deck. So he, actually David is in the shed for this. I thought, you know, he um, and 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 Sive is coming down the hill there and she's frenzied because Sive is, is, is she wants to help and she fears she's late. And this is a typical um, make hay when the sun shines picture um in the summer this is almost it's common place to us but there's something almost because everybody's together it's 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 a really big family event in a way and manis is there in his little nappy and he's getting loaded door action he'll never be far from a door and um sean sean is a great little boy he loves to help but you have to motivate him so in order to, to get him going, you know, there might be a slight bit of, you know, of a, if you do it, we'll do something, you know, you're allowed to go on your tablet later, you know, they, they are, um, they're like every other children, they're not just uh, whipped down into the yard at every moment, but they, uh, they're great helpers, and they do really get into it, and um, so do you, do you just a little bit of OT there, because he's all, you know, he's been included with the gang, and he's, he's not, you know, he's always with us. Do, do you take pictures when uh, when you have the opportunity or do you carry a camera with you all the time or? Uh, you know, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't always carry my camera. Um, I'm not following them around all the time, but just like on the off chance when I think there might be an evening where it could be quite interesting uh, to bring it or it could be stuck in the nappy bag. I think I said that before. Um, if maybe I'm, I'm going to go on to another stage in the farm and I'm in the van and I could be putting Manus in the, the baby seat and the camera's in the nappy bag and Manus and his, uh, all his other bits and bobs. So, um. One of the nice things about the pictures in the magazine is that the, you really do get an extra layer of understanding the pictures from reading your captions. And I think this is uh, particularly true of this picture and the next picture. Could you say what's going on here? So this is every second Sunday during the summer, the grass has grown. Daddy's only day off. There's a few hours in the Sunday that he gets off and he loves to take Manus on the ride on. And all the kids love to go on the ride on when they were little. Um, and Manus is getting this gorgeous sensory feedback that he really craves from the engine, the hum and the the loud noise, he loves that. And um, he loves hard surfaces, uh, hard surfaces and uh, pressing, you know, he, pressing his, his uh, fingers against tractors and big machinery, it's, it's, you know, for a small little boy. So uh, 
Manus is totally elated in, 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 on the tractor. Um, Sean, on the other hand, doesn't really like loud um, sounds and noises, and he'd probably retreat to the other side of the garden. So it's interesting that the you know the two children you know the, the same thing doesn't really um, ha you know they, they don't love the same things and that that idea that all children with autism are the same or is you know that's not true for it might not work for another child. Um, here's Sive. A Sive is role playing. So you know while Manus is you know the dominant child in the family side, she's really intuitive. And she's really aware that he gets all the attention. So she's decided she wants to have her go on the lawnmower. Um, and uh, she's aware that I'm, I have the camera. And, uh, you know, she's playing to me a little bit. But um, I think it makes a really interesting image um, in her place in the family. Okay, so here, night walks. So this is a common thing. Uh, from January, February, March, April, May, there might be 30 or 40 girls in the yard, cows, ready to, to have their babies. So it's my job. Uh, David doesn't really get in from work sometimes at seven or eight or nine. And um, it's my job to, to uh, go and check all the cows. And uh, Manus loves the yard. Um, and there's this thing as well with children that have autism. Their melatonin is is not as um, you know they don't have a production of melatonin that we would have so their sleep patterns are really disturbed and it um, and Manus isn't always sleep so this could be nine o'clock on a Saturday night and um, I'm trying to walk the legs of him so that he'll sleep and not disturb the rest of the family um, and the other children get a break from him particularly on a weekend when he's there all day from you know, he, he, he's a restless child, he doesn't sit down. Um, but there's something interesting in the yard because he seems to have this, once he gets near the cattle, he gets this kind of little bit of calm. And I'm also really interested in uh, the behaviors of people with autism and how there's lovely research now about, maybe that can be applied to the behaviors of, of cattle. Um, and I, I'm, I'm looking and making a lot of images around this as well at the moment. So that's that's something that I'm working on as well. So uh, Manus is very much at the center of the story. And uh, a lot of the pictures describe uh, everybody's relationship to him. Um, does everybody take part in this, uh, you know, going to see the cows and... Sometimes, um, you know, the girls, are great. Do you know what? The girls are fantastic. They're, they're powerful. They're going to be mighty farmers if they want it. Um, Sean can take it or leave it. He's, he's, he's more concocting a, a, a laboratory. He's growing dinosaur eggs and, and he's, he's dividing insects at the back of the house. Um, it, it, it's, everybody is involved, you know, and we all try to do our best. It's a, it, it's a full-time job and I think we're probably really lucky in a way. Uh, it's a very happy household and um, the autism piece is just another factor, but it, it's, really, it's a really dominant thing. But, uh, you know, um, yeah, we're, we're probably lucky that we live on a farm really because the kids get a great opportunity and uh, to, to see lots of things like the cows, you know, uh, giving birth and they're, they're all, fairly formidable in a way, so it's all, it's all positive. To, to return to the theme of the issue, I, I, I remember when I first saw the pictures thinking that there's something sort of delightful but also quite mysterious about what's going on in this picture here. Is it like that for you? I've got loads of pictures of this yard um, and I've made lots of images in the yard. I, I could have taken this project and probably made images without a child even in the pictures um, and that's probably kind of creeping more into my imagination and um, but I think the project needs it needs to have the portraits of the children in it to really give it that that uh, 
extra meaning, you know. Um, I've done work before where there's no people, um, but I think with this it has to be so. Great. Well, thanks very much. Um, maybe we'll have time for uh, a few questions in a, in a minute or so. Um, but uh, so yeah, thanks very much, Lorraine, for talking about those uh, those pictures. I'm I'm going to uh, chat to Ed now. So Ed, um, you uh, have reviewed two books for us in this issue, and um, I should maybe say a little bit about the the, the process by which we choose books um, for review. Um, so I have a look at the books that are published over any three or six month period and uh, then I go through a process of trying to think who would be uh, the right person to ask to, to, write, about, to write about a book um, and sometimes a number of books arrive that have a very similar subject matter or they seem to, uh, to coalesce and in this case we have two books that are about shadows both published by American university presses, one of a French author and one of an American author, and it seemed uh, like it would be a good idea to compare them. So Ed, at that point, I asked you if you wanted to write about them and sent them to you, uh, and how did they appear to you when you first got them? Well, I think what, what, was, uh, what was interesting about these books is the fact that um, they they were they appeared more or less at the same sort of time the first thing i noticed actually was that they didn't necessarily seem to know each other which was kind of quite striking but also quite nice i quite like the fact that they kind of converged on um this idea the notion of the shadow in relation to photography um but they'd sort of clearly kind of come at it sort of independently and also they, they they'd kind of they, they they'd grounded this their, their their discussion in the work of henry fox talbot um, so, so there was this very interesting kind of convergence around the idea, but what was also then interesting was how they kind of diverged in how they approached it. Um, uh, maybe a little bit of context, the, the, the two books we're talking about, um, one by French author Jean-Christophe Bailly, um, was actually published in France in 2008. Uh, and then the translation only came out um, this year, last year. Um, so kind of as far as an Anglo Anglophone audience is concerned, it appears to be a new work. The Canaan book um, did come out in the last kind of year or so. So, so much more kind of contemporary. And yet that was the book that you might have expected. You might have come across the Bailly, but, but hadn't done. Um, but that's fine, you know, and, and, but, and I think that, that kind of reinforced the sense that, that both authors had kind of landed on this topic and of how uh, they kind of noticed how Fox Talbot's images in that, that, that original album, a lot of them um, captured shadows in different sorts of ways and kind of what that means, you know, why, why this preoccupation with the shadow? I think, um, I think one, one of the things I just wanted to ask you about this, about the setting up the review, I think one of the things that was tempting for me was the idea that uh, you've got two very traditions of writing about things. On the one hand, you've got a kind of uh, an academic book by um, somebody in, an, in a, an American university. On the other hand, you've got something that is a sort of more literary French tradition. Um, is that how the books actually, what the books are actually like? Uh, yes, um, they are. And, and this, I suppose, uh, takes us into to the whole question of I suppose how you write about photography, actually, you know, uh, thinking about the theme of the issue as well. Um, the, 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 the book by Jean-Christophe Bailly, Bailly uh, is a, a, an interesting character. He's, um, he, he's an academic, he's got an academic training and academic background and he works in academic institutions in France. But he also represents that very strong tradition within French literature and culture of the kind of the essayist. Uh, and there is the, 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 the kind of the, the, the very kind of long and distinguished tradition. I mean, if you want to do the history of it, you go back to people like Montaigne. The idea of the essay is this kind of speculative exploration of a topic um, that's not necessarily kind of confined by the, the kind of the standards of, of, of the academic genre, you know, in terms of the, the, the rigor of the development of the argument, the kind of the, the, the painstaking and sometimes painful 
uh, need to kind of cover all your bases in terms of the kind of the, the field of discussion. It, it can be slightly more kind of freewheeling and, 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 and speculative. And, and Bayi does that very nicely. And the way he does that is by starting from uh, the picture of the haystack in the Fox Talbot album, but then talking about how it sparks a memory or sparks a recognition in him. And the recognition is in the, fo is in the image, um, one of the images taken in Hiroshima after the, uh, the, the explosion of the atomic bomb, where we see the shadow of a ladder and also a human being against uh, the wall of a, a wall of a, of a, of a house. And, and, and so he kind of, he uses that little spark of connection to, to, to explore these different, uh, the, 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 these different questions. The, 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 the Canon book is, is, I suppose, more classically academic, but it's also a really well written and a, and a kind of an engrossing read. And I suppose I used a but there, which implies that sometimes there's a kind of mutual exclusiveness. Um, but he's, he's very much more within the academic tradition of writing. So it's a very, it's a well-referenced book. It's very clear in terms of how it's positioning its argument. Um, but then he, he, he nevertheless writes in a very kind of an appealing and an engaging way. And I think, a way that that kind of sort of exemplifies some of the best academic writing about photography you know that that, that carries its theory lightly if you like and i think that's really important um, as a mode of writing about photography you know again coming back to the theme of the issue about how exactly one does write or talk about photography and the extent to which writing or talking about photography can only ever get you so far at the end of the day what I liked about both these books was the fact that they were uh, that they they picked up on this idea on this this thing they'd seen uh, this 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 feature of the photographs and, and really wanted to kind of mine where they thought it it, it, it took how we might engage with a photograph um, but yeah two different two, two different styles just to interrupt you there though, so we've got an image here from the Bayi of the two uh, the two images that he sort of, uh, he hinges his um, argument on. Could you say why he's put these two pictures together? Yeah, so, so I, I guess for him... Maybe we he, should say what they are. What are the two pictures, first of all? Yeah, so the one, the one on the left, I, I mean, uh, pe people, um, pe people may well recognize it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of the images that was in the Fox Talbot Pencil of Nature album from 1844. Um, and, and here we see it actually, it's, he notes, I think it's he notes, I think it's by either of the two that notes, that in this album, there are actually four pictures, four photographs that feature a ladder propped against something. In this instance, it's against the haystack. Um, and this is one of these kind of pastoral scenes that, that, that features in, in, the, um, in, in the, the Pencil of Nature album. Um, on the right is um, one of the photos, one of the photos, quite a bit, which itself was, became quite a famous photo taken in Hiroshima, um, where we see, you can tell the kind of the, the, the imprint or the shadow of the stepladder um, sort of almost plumb in the center of the image. And then to the right of that, the outline of a figure, a man, we assume, um, both of them vaporized in the atomic bomb. And then um, there are two versions of this photo. One, you don't see the ladder present in the image. The other is this one where you do. Um, I think it's safe to assume that this is a ladder that's been propped against uh, the, 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 the image to kind of reinforce this connection. So what he's doing here really is then thinking, well, well, well how can we think about the, the shadow as a kind of a, the, the, the trace or the kind of the, 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 the sort of the, the, the imprint? And, and how do we think about that in terms of the ways in which shadows kind of work in photographs and in photography? And what does it say about the kind of the photographic process, really? Um, what I took from that, and, and this again is where the the reviewer or the reader kind of engages with what's going on i found there was something very interesting about how he was bringing together these two moments of photography um the the, the, the one on the left if you like the what the fox talbot image a kind of a founding moment where you know that that kind of 
the magic of what the photograph can do is 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 articulated in a very very kind of um still and almost simple image uh, and then you go forward to hiroshima where uh, one of the things i say in the piece is the idea that he 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 picks up on how the flash of the atomic bomb is almost like the the photographic flash taken to its most kind of apocalyptic extreme uh, and so there's an odd kind of echo that's, that that resonates between these two images at uh, two extremes of history two kind of extremes of photographic kind of significance um but there's something sort of quite it reaches deep down in that connection between what seems to be a very kind of modest and pastoral scene uh, and the image of this kind of you know the the, the aftermath of, of horrendous violence um and i guess that says something about the the, the 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 physics and the chemistry and the process of the photographic but it also says something about why we turn to the photograph in attempts to engage with what these things mean and and, and what they're about and things like that so that's what i took out of that constellation i liked the fact that he kind of he, he did a walter benjamin and he brought them two together and and and, and you get this kind of really rich kind of exploration of quite simple things I was going to ask you uh, when you're when you what's your process for writing the review? I mean, I I send out these books, but I never quite know exactly what happens when they arrive at your end. I mean, I've got the chance to look at the books, and I you know I photograph them, um, and I have some idea what the books are about. But until I read your copy, so what's the process for you? Um, in this instance, uh, so it's bit, uh, this is probably uh, uh, this is. It's not often that I review, review two together, and I, I like that. Um, so clearly, clearly, the first thing I do is read the books. <laughs> um, but, but, but actually, um, I, I suppose in a way the, the order of reading is quite important because, to a degree, that kind of dictates how you the, the connections that emerge or the impressions that you form. Um, in this instance, I started with the Bailly, the Jean Christophe Bailly book. Uh, partly because I was also reading some of his uh, another book by him at the same time, so for that became then a kind of a, 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 a kind of a, a, a way of reading across. I, I don't, I could have got into his style if you like, so I was familiar with the style of writing and, and, and kind of you, you know was working with it a little bit. Um, and then I, I switched to to, to to the other, and really then what I'm looking for are points of connection, um, points of points of of, of kind of convergence of argument but also the kind of the points of difference and I think these books were, were, were nice in that instance partly partly because of the style that you alluded to at the start the fact that they represented kind of different sort of ways of, of trying to approach the photographic um do you, do you have but, a sense of sorry Ed, do, you, no. do, you, do you have a do you have a sense of who you're writing for when you sit down to write the piece do you have in your mind, uh, sort of consciously or unconsciously, uh, an idea of who the reader is? Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, yes. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, no, I'm, I, I, I'm hopeful that the source. Well, I know the source readership is a um, is is going to be a well informed and and uh, readership with a broad, a relatively you know a good broad sound knowledge of. Of, of the photography and its history and, it, and 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 its theories and its and its ideas that also makes me sometimes slightly nervous because i'm aware that there is a depth of knowledge out there that so, so there's a kind of a that kind of one has to raise one's game um but at the same time it's got to be i hope i try to make it nice to read um i mean I, and that's one of the things that i've enjoyed kind of developing i suppose over the many years actually now that I've been writing for Source and kind of being an academic I spend a lot of time writing but I think it's important to recognize that academic writing or writing and reading should be pleasurable and finding ways in which you can um, engage the reader is an important thing for me um, whether it's uh, you know whether it's through the observations whether it's through trying to find a kind of a the uh, a neat way of expressing the idea so there's a lot of kind of graft goes into that i think the kind of the crafting of the writing is quite important um in a way the shorter the shorter reviews are kind of um more helpful for that because you can just be a bit punchier and you kind of you know almost be slightly more um slightly kind of 
quicker in your slightly more throwaway sometimes actually as well a, a longer piece um I, I think it does give you that space to to really kind of get into the meat of what the book's about um but so it's not just the kind of the type of writing to, that, that I do for source that's perhaps different from the other sort of writing, but even the types of reviews within writing for source that kind of have their different sort of styles and challenges actually, you know, but that's good. I enjoy that, you know. Great. Well, we should leave a little bit of time in, uh, in case anybody wants to ask any questions. Thanks very much, Ed. That's, uh, that's very okay. interesting. Um, so uh, I, we have a process now where if, uh, if anybody wants to ask a question, then uh, you can either um, write something in the chat box uh, that is in the um, bottom of your screen, or alternatively, you can uh, raise your hand. Um, and this is, if you go to the uh, participants section on your screen and you want to ask a question, you can uh, press the thing to, to uh, to ask to to ask a question, and then we can either speak to Lorraine or to Ed to find out a bit more about their work. Um, my colleague um, Susanna should be able to see uh, if you if you raise your hand there. Um, I should ask just while people are having a think about that, Ed, could I ask you one other question? Did do you enjoy reading these? Did you actually enjoy these two books in the same way we were talking about enjoying the process of writing? Did you do you enjoy the books? Yeah, d definitely. Um, definitely. I, I thought, I mean, in, in terms of, as a recommendation, um, I, I think bo both books are really worth reading on um, not just kind of, not just sort of Henry Fox Talbot, um, but also in terms of the, some of the, the more philosophical questions they raise about the, the you know, the nature of the photographic image and, 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 and how we respond to photographic images as well. I think they're both really, um, really interesting books from that point of view, and also nicely written books as well. Uh, I mean, the 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 the, the Canaan um, photography in its shadow book. Um, I thought it was perhaps one of the one of the most engaging, interesting um, books of photography theory and philosophy I've read for a while, actually. Um, in terms of the kind of the breadth of of work that he engaged with, from from Fox Talbot through to kind of contemporary imaging, how he traces the 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 theme of the um, uh, of the shadow and, and and goes into some of the art historical kind of context for it as well um so yeah i did i did enjoy it i don't think there's any book that you've sent me that i've not enjoyed and even even the kind of the slightly more hostile re re reactions it pro they provoke are kind of enjoyable because that gives you something to write about you know you need a bit of a bit of spark to kind of get your get your writing going really great thank you so um, I think we have a few questions in there. Um, let me just see if I can uh, see them. Um, I saw a question there from, uh, from Joe. Uh, let me see if I can, um, uh, Joanna, do you want, would you like to, uh, would you like to ask a question yourself there? Hi, okay. Hi, Hello, Joe. Hi, um, I was just um, a question to Lorraine about um, I thought her images also kind of say something quite, uh, I suppose, intense is the word, or kind of like the the family's kind of experience of living and like working in in nature, you know, like working in this very intense way with animals. And then so, but that's kind of part of nature. And I was wondering whether that comes into your thinking, Lorraine. Every day here. <laughs> It's, it's the everyday thinking. Um, there's, you can't compartmentalize the farm. It's there, it's, it's, it's 24 seven. So it affects everybody in the home. If that answers your question. But it's, um, it's, it's really enjoyable, but yeah, it can be intense and sometimes yeah, overwhelming. I'm, I'm not afraid to say that. Uh, it's hard work and it, not, you know, things are not always rosy in the garden. Um, but it's certainly um, enjoyable and, and I feel lucky in a way because of, um, I suppose, man is because of his, his, I suppose he has a lot of difficulties. He needs help with all his um, 
you know, fine and gross motor skills, his feeding, his toileting, his everything that the, the farm is sometimes a really good distraction from all that. And it's feeding into him and it's helping him. It's good occupational therapy. And, 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 and the rest of the children are getting um, lots of um, feedback when they go out onto the farm and help their daddy. It's not, you know, just all about inside the house or what goes on inside the house. Um, I hope that answers some of your questions. Um, let me ask you something then, Lorraine. Uh, Steve, Steve Bull has uh, just made a, a, a uh, notice something which um, is one of those things that's right in front of your face and you, you don't notice it until someone points it out, that we've been looking at pictures of haystacks. We've been looking at Fox Talbot's pictures of haystacks and your pictures of haystacks. And it had never occurred to me to put them together, but I suppose I, uh, it leads to the question, how much do you think about the history of photography when you're working? Not at the moment I'm making pictures. I mean, I do know a lot about the history of photography. I, I, I did, uh, I, you know, I, I as a BA in, in documentary photography, um, right back to stereoscopes, Daguerre, Talbot, Eastman, right up to Roy Stryker, SSA, you name it. I, you know, I, I still read John Tagg sometimes. Um, I'm not going to say I understand every single word, um, but... Uh, Susan Sontag, um, wonderful woman. Um, it's really helpful, I suppose, to make those um, connections with those type of uh, people, those writers, because it, it, it helps maybe when you're making the pictures afterwards to, to understand what you're, what you're doing. I'm not, I don't think every artist understands exactly what they're doing or a photographer at the time. You're making photographs because you like making photographs. Yeah. Um, we have a question here from Tanya. Maybe Tanya, you could uh, ask it yourself. And Boy, do I have to? I'm, I'm also halfway through my dinner here. Um, <laughs> listen, thank you so much. It's a, it's a fantastic, and, and as 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 my colleague Trisha said, we are so lucky to have the caliber of 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 source as a review coming from. Um, this island. So well done to uh, Richard, well done to, to John. Um, my question was actually coming out from you. I, I was delighted to see you ask Ed about kind of the pleasure of these things because, you know, one of the things that people point their finger at you lot and they say, oh, you're terribly dry. You're terribly dry, it's terribly cerebral. You know, it's like as though you don't like, photo like photographs sometimes. So, um, uh, it's good to have that kind of question about enjoyment and pleasure and desire and so on. And um, I, I just wanted to ask uh, Lorraine in particular then how that, you know, you, she kind of listed all the things that she is. She's a mother and she's a farmer and she's a photographer and, you know, and she's got special demands made of her. How does she stop the photography becoming just another, oh, or... In other words, the short answer, the short question is, how does photography help? And I'm asking in particular because I'm working also now with Miriam O'Connor, who I also see there. Hello, Miriam. And um, that uh, Miriam is also, you know, working on a farm and so on. And these things are, it's your environment. It's all encompassing. How do you, how does photography help in something like farm work? Quite apart from family work. But does it help? Does it help me? Um, I, I, that's an interesting question, uh, Tanya. I, it, it, I don't think I deliberately make pictures to help. Uh, you know, uh, does it make me think a bit more about the farm? Maybe does it make me think about more about the home, about the family, about my position in the family, what I am, what I have to offer? Um, is it meditative? No. Um, I love making pictures, but I'm, I'm, I don't always carry a camera. Um, it's not cathartic. It's you know, maybe, um, maybe, maybe Miriam could come in too as well because it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to 
to to do i imagine to to kind of be in the moment and to have all these things you know that you have to do and yet also then to there is a certain you know with photography always there is that there is that distance there is that putting you know mediation so I don't know how that all works. Anyway. Yeah, I suppose. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to be here this evening. And congratulations, Richard and John, on, on the, the new uh, issue uh, and to all those contributors as well. Um, I suppose from my own perspective, you know, I'm, I, you know, I relocated to the family farm like seven years ago uh, following uh, the death of my brother. So I suppose the context in which I've arrived in this, um, in this moment in my life is a little bit different. Um, and nonetheless, I suppose I do recognise the unique position that I'm in, in many senses, and this idea that, um, you know, still, I think, a, an area that uh, is sort of underrepresented or perhaps is represented in a cliched manner. Um, so I recognise and I can see parallels, and, and I was very interested to, to see Lorraine's work uh, in, in, in Source, uh, and quite glad about that. Um, I suppose from my own perspective, um, you know, my practice is very much revolves around kind of having a camera with me um, a lot of the time. Um, and so when I moved here, um, or relocated, let's say, uh, that sort of, um, you know, continued as part of uh, the way in which I work. Um, so certainly I wouldn't see it as something that is something else. It is part of my day. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean I take photographs every day, but it's quite, um, you know, artist first, you know, farmer second. <laughs> and I have to say for me, you know, um, and I, I feel all the, I'm quite excited about the kind of possibilities um, of how, how agriculture can be imagined through photography or thought about uh, or engaged with. So, yeah, I find it quite an, um, uh, quite an exciting prospect to, to continue work. Um, you know, I'm just a, um, finished a long-term project, um, but to continue working in this environment for me is very exciting. Um, but like from different kinds of perspectives, you know, it's, it's um, yeah. Do you, can I ask you, Miriam, do you know Lorraine? Yeah, I don't know her. I've, I know her okay. through Noel Bowler, who I think is online here somewhere on one of those contact strips at the top. Um, so yeah, I think I think I met Lorraine in Dublin. Hi, Lorraine, uh, in Dublin a number of years ago, um, and you know, I, I you know, I'm just sort of no was telling me about her her work, and I remember that, and um, you know, I sort of we we follow each other on Instagram, um, so it's always good to see um, to see. Uh, You've done one thing tonight. You've but yes, I'm familiar with her practice, uh, and you know, it's it's great to sort of. Um, uh, see somebody else, you know, females working in this field. Um, and I suppose working critically in this field as well, I think. And that's, that's quite important, you know, to, you know, you know, as Lorraine was saying, this idea of kind of rose tinted um, everyday life and agriculture, you know, can be quite challenging. And, um, you know, you, you know, the, to be kind of critical in how photography is used, uh, I think uh, is important. And I think there's still work to be done. Um, you know, we, myself and Lorraine will keep going <laughs> with, um, with uh, this uh, side of things. So, yes. Okay. I think Great. we've got time for one more question. Um, and uh, Jean Baird has asked, has asked a question here. Jean, can you, uh, can you uh, ask a question? I think you've got a question for Ed. I was just, I was wondering, um, can you hear me? Because I've, yes. yeah, okay, yeah. oh, lovely. And I, I was just wondering about, the connections between and and the way that two books on the shadow have come out at this particular time and also the connections between an, a much earlier book I think by um, Stohi Chita um, very interesting on a short history of the shadow in art um, and I wondered how these two books were picking up on that and also I was thinking about Mike Weaver's very um, symbolic interpretations of uh, Fox Talbot and the ladder, you know, and the idea that actually there's something quite religious going on there. And that ladder is about a kind of transcendence. And so on the one hand, we have the transcendent, and then on the other, Hiroshima. Um, 
and the, the complete devastation. And I can't help also but put this in a kind of contemporary context. Um, so I wanted to know, Ed, how you were thinking about those kinds of issues in relation to those two books. Um, thanks for the question. Uh, the, 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 I think I think what's 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 interesting actually, and this is perhaps an opportunity to say a little bit more about the Canaan. That we give, given that that we we spent quite a lot of time talking about the the Jean Christophe Bailly book. Um, uh, I mean, really, this th this takes us to the kind of the nub of of Canaan's argument, which is which is really interesting and and, and quite kind of it's difficult to to kind of put in a nutshell but he 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 basically argues that um the kind of the presence of the shadow is almost like a kind of it's a moment where uh, it it sort of induces a sense of uh, it's almost as if fox talbot didn't quite realize the magnitude of what he'd done kind of moment and, and that the whole history of photography in a way is an attempt to not quite look in the face the magnitude of what of what uh, of what he's revealed through photographing a shadow, and, and the reason he's uh, the reason he argues that I think really kind of loops into the, the, the question of transcendence. And you're right, symbolically, and 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 here we we kind of you know it's interesting how in in terms of reading photographs and turning photographs into language and turning and sort of encoding the meanings of photographs you know the, the kind of the invitation to see images of transcendence and ideas of transcendence and actually what Kanan is picking upon is is the idea of how the shadow is is being explored or being revealed in terms of transience and and his argument if you like, is really that the, the thing that photography couldn't cope with, or Fox Talbot's photography couldn't cope with, was the, the, the presence of transience and, and the importance of transience within art, but also within life. And, and the, 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 back to the, the idea of the photograph as an attempt to fix or to elide or to try to kind of get away from transience. But Canaan's kind of suggestion is that if, if that's a kind of if that's something that, that the photograph is being used to deny transients, actually maybe the problem is that it, it can't quite see that transients is, is, is intrinsic to life and intrinsic to art. So I suppose to answer your question in terms of transcendence, the, 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 the intimations of transcendence that we might find in those photographs, I think Kanan would argue that the the the, tra the transcendent lies in it's almost like a misrecognition if you like on the part of photography the transcendent lies in embracing and accepting the transience um but the photographic is constantly in that kind of very very kind of challenged and challenging relationship with transience by its nature it it it, it, what it fixes mm. but at the same time the fixing is part of a kind of a negotiation with the transient um, I'm not sure if that answers your question because you're right. I mean, it's that th they're undoubtedly kind of engaging with the whole kind of history of the, the shadow in our historical terms, but also just in terms of kind of perception and ontology and all those kind of things. But I thought that his kind of intuition around fixing and transience was really quite, that for me was what really kind of resonated in this book and why I found that he turned to the shadow. I think the, Bailly, the, the power of the Bailly comes in that, the way he yokes together those two images, you know, the, the kind of the, the, the soft, the calm and the pastoral quality of the haystack image and the, and, and the kind of the sheer kind of magnitude of what is represented in that shadow after Hiroshima. Um, both, I think, kind of capturing the power of the photographic, but also the, the kind of the, the power of the human at the same time. So a different form of transcendence, more, 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 more in the land of the sublime, I guess. You might want to put it in those sorts of terms. But yeah, trans transcendence and transience, I think, are working together in both of these books in very interesting ways. And I think they're trying to kind of get at something that we're feeling that photography, photography is doing. But there's a difference between feeling it and trying to say it. And they also recognize, I think, that, they, that you can never, ever fully say the photograph, if you see what I mean. So what you're saying, Ed, is that it's it's unsayable. <laughs> that is exactly what I'm saying, which I think That's you know fantastic. brings us where to, back to where we started. Fantastic.
That's a fantastic answer. Thank you very much. So I think this is a very nice moment at which uh, I have this strange sensation of uh, we've bought these books from France and from the US and we've sent them to uh, a writer in Scotland and now we're all sitting uh, talking about them. And uh, it's a, a great privilege to hear Lorraine and Ed uh, talking about their process. Uh, if you want to see the concise, uh, boiled down and uh, clear uh, enunciation of what Ed's been talking about, uh, then you can see it in the uh, 1200 words he's written in the magazine. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much to everybody for coming along. Um, it's always a bit of a strange moment at the end of these events when uh, we press uh, end. But I think um, if, if you can put your hands together in your uh, living rooms and your kitchens and say thank you to Ed and Lorraine for uh, speaking to us today. And um, I hope you enjoy the magazine um, and we look forward to seeing you uh, at the next launch. Um, and uh, please get in touch with us if you want to uh, contribute to the magazine or tell us anything about uh, what you've seen in the issue uh, on social media or have a look at our website. And if maybe you've got some work to show us, uh, we'd be delighted to see it. Um, you'll see on the website how to do it just exactly in the same way that Lorraine came to see us last year. Uh, we welcome you come to see us too. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you at the next launch. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks.